The Honourable Member for Cape Breton Centre. Mr. Speaker, families across our province, including Carly Sutherland's family, are out of luck with their children when their children age out of eligibility for EIBI. At six, children with ASD cease to be the concern of the health system. According to Autism Nova Scotia, some families in this situation are be paying between six and $7,000 per month out of pocket for therapy and respite care because of what's available through their school just isn't enough, and I'll table that. Mr. Speaker, can the Minister explain, the Minister of Health, explain why his government is asking the education system to provide clinical treatment and support that should be the responsibility of the Department of Health and Wellness? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member uh, for the question. Uh, very timely in light of yesterday's uh, Autism Awareness and Acceptance Day, Mr. Speaker, in light of our, our guests uh, that were here uh, earlier today. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, it's been a long-standing approach uh, to work with our partners across government uh, through uh, the Department of Health and Wellness, uh, Education, Community Services, all offering a range of programs and services and supports uh, for Nova Scotians uh, with autism. Uh, the model and the approach that uh, has uh, been taken and is in place uh, includes, as the member noted, uh, a, a transition uh, for school-aged children uh, to receive the supports and uh, programs through the education program system. And I'm pleased, Mr. Speaker, that uh, we've uh, added an additional uh, $15 million in our budget this year to help work towards inclusive education, which, uh, Mr. Speaker, many uh, uh, children with autism will be able to receive the benefit of that investment. The Honourable Member for Cape Breton Centre. Mr. Speaker, the pot of money that families need in need of respite care for access has actually been cut by 12 per cent since this government took office in 2013. We also know that our mental health crisis supports don't have the capacity to support those with ASD. ASD. The last autism strategy recommended that the province should evaluate the existing services for families and individuals with ASD, but there has been no update on that strategy. We know from talking to families that the crisis services aren't adequate, but we're not sure if the government is aware. Mr. Speaker, when can Nova Scotians expect a clear plan for families with ASD? The Honourable Minister of Health. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank uh, the member for the question. Uh, indeed, uh, one of the things we've done as a, as a government has worked hard uh, with, between departments uh, to really break down traditional silos so that, uh, in fact, there's more opportunity uh, for uh, not just uh, ministers, Mr. Speaker, but also uh, staff within departments to uh, engage and uh, look for those opportunities where we can uh, support, bring uh, to bear uh, all supports uh, that we may have uh, when uh, an individual requires uh, investments. Uh, in this case, we're talking specifically about uh, individuals, particularly those uh, at the more acute uh, side of the autism spectrum disorder. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we continue to uh, work together uh, when uh, those cases come forward, and uh, we have programs and supports in place uh, for those that fit uh, more on the, uh, on the um, spectrum, Mr. Speaker, that fit the standard uh, programs we have in place. 